In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the long range pattern looking through the month of April and even into the month of May. Now, as we take a look at the overall pattern, we can tell there's some cool air along the western United States, but not only that, for the eastern United States overall, mm -hmm. with warmth around in between there. Uh, let's continue this on. I want to get to a range where we're really, you know, moving into a little bit more of the extended range. We get ourselves into a little bit of a horseshoe pattern. And what do I mean by that? Well, there's warmth on the outside here. And there's cold air on the inside of this horseshoe here, as you can see. And this is what we're dealing with. Warm, coast to coast to coast, Gulf Coast, East Coast, West Coast, all warm. Uh, and then cold there in between. This is going to push eastward, as you can see, over time. Uh, so what happens is we see this cold really move its way into the eastern United States. The warmth moves its way mostly into the western United States. Uh, but we see this little bit of a trough trying to move in here. And that is going to eventually move its way back into uh, the, everything's just going to move eastward. This is typically what we see. This isn't that unusual, but that is what we're going to be dealing with. Everything will move its way back eastward over time. Let's just inch this along. This is what we're like in between. We have this trough here and a trough here with the warmth in between. Okay, and this is going to make its way eastward here. Uh, this trough is going to try to become the primary one, and it's going to dig down into the western United States, which gives the really gives the warmth nowhere else to go other than the eastern United States. So that's really what we're going to be watching for uh, throughout this pattern uh, is just everything progressing from west to east. So you see it just takes a long time, but it gets there. This is Wednesday, April 13th. So this is the mid portion of this month here in the month of April. So we see for the western United States, very cold now. This has really anchored itself in here. Uh, and we see the warmth has really anchored its way into this region for the middle portion of the month of April. Um, and, and as we continue this on, we can see that the cold does spread to where it's taking up a majority of the country. But still, the eastern third or so, maybe the eastern fourth of the country, is dealing with some warm, warm air overall, uh, really building its way in here, as you can see. As we move further in, what this model does is uh, eventually, as we reach later in the month, it centers the cold over the east and it tries to bring the warmth back to the west. Obviously, as we know, the further into this we get, the lower the confidence is. Uh, however, this does seem to be a model that feels fairly confident in what it's pro projecting. That's something that you know you have to really have an eye for it. But there's just some looks that look realistic and then there's some looks where you're like, okay, this model's really confused right now. And actually, I want to pull up the European Weeklies model here because we're going to really break down the longer range pattern, even the longer range pattern. So here's week one. This is going to be um, this week. Um, and we can see cold air around here for a lot of the United States, actually. And as we move seven days on, this is where we get by the time we're reaching April 7th through 14th. A lot of cold for the West and a lot of cold here for the East as well. Uh, and then warmth for the central United States, according to this model. Uh, that warmth does center itself over the eastern United States here for about a week, 13th to 20th. And we see the cold here, but we're going to have to see how things really progress. So let's continue on with this. See if it does the same thing as the European ensemble model. Well, this one averages out, but we do see the cold gets centered over here by the time we're reaching into May here as well. But it keeps that warmth over the central United States. That's something we're going to have to watch. Uh, also down here for the southeast, there's a bit of a southeast ridge, but it's quite minor. Uh, but really, the jet stream would look like this. Um, very progressive, very flat, but cold sticks up here in the northern United States. And really, the warmth is able to really make its way into uh, the southern United States to a certain extent. This looks to be the pattern here that I'm seeing from this European Weeklies model which this European Weeklies model is just a very long range version of the European Ensemble model. Clearly we get, you know, very far into this. We can get all the way to the middle portion of May. So we're approaching the summertime, which is June 1st is meteorological summer. Um, so that is where we're at on this model. Uh, now I also want to take a look at, let's see, we'll take a look at the CFS extended model. Uh, this one tends to oftentimes, um, be a little bit more opinionated and what I mean by that is that it will actually it doesn't average out as much uh, this one will really show you what it thinks um, I know I'm talking about a computer model here it sounds like I'm talking about a person but they just work differently is my point 
Uh, we see lots of cold air making their its its way there into the northwest, but also into the east here for April 4th through 11th. Um, and as we move to the week afterwards, we could see a lot of this warmth builds in to this region, and then most of the cold here is in the west. Uh, so again, cold, warmth mostly over here. Let's move on another week from there. And this week looks a little bit warmer for the southeast here, the, the April 18th through 25th time frame. So we are seeing some agreement from the model here where this region does stay warmer. Uh, and then the northern United States overall is cooler, except we have some of it making its way into the southwest as well. Uh, but this looks a lot like the European uh, weekly model. And you want to see that agreement. Obviously, that's a really good sign that these models are onto something when they do actually agree with what they're calling for. You don't want to see two models uh, in the long range is calling for complete opposite things because that would mean that our indications of this is, is based on something weak. Um, but what it, it's actually surprising here what ends up happening. We see really cold air uh, build its way into the eastern United States rapidly there to, to end April. This is April 24th through May 1st uh, here, as you can see on the top right corner of your screen. And a lot of the cold builds into this region. The majority of it's built into there. We do have some neutral temperatures out west by this point. Uh, let's move on towards April, May 1st through May 8th. And we can see a little bit of cooler air here for the southeast and also for the west. But look, just like the European model, we have uh, primarily warmth building into this kind of west central United States region uh, with cold on both coasts. So that seems to be what both models agree on at this point. Um, and then we get, I mean, we kind of are sticking in it. Cold here, cold here, and really just warmth building in all the way up into Canada here for the central and the, the kind of interior uh, western United States. Very, very interesting pattern we find ourselves in here, I would say. I mean, I, I'm intrigued for sure. Uh, this is a very, very interesting pattern. Um, and this is as far as we can see. This is May 12th through May 19th, so we are getting a pretty extended range uh, outlook here. But overall, I mean, it looks like this to me. It looks like this. I think the western one is a little more potent and digs deeper, but then we do see a bit of colder air trying to make its way into the eastern United States. It's important to note this is a seven-day period that we're taking a look at. This does not mean the entire seven-day period from day one to day seven will be below normal. It just means that probably... Um, a majority of the days will be colder than normal. And there might be some warmer days mixed in, but it's taking the average of all seven days, of whatever this model thinks, uh, and trying to come up with a number for that. And that's what we're seeing here. So uh, just to you know get rid of any confusion, that's what we're taking a look at here. Let's take a quick look at some of the teleconnections. Um, and first off, we're taking a look at our Arctic oscillation. In the positive phase, warmer air dominates the United States in the negative phase, colder air really makes its way into the United States. Uh, and I'm going to try to make us flat of a line. Ooh, that was really good. Okay, so that's the neutral line. As you can see, we're in the dominant colder phase right now all the way through today. Actually, so April 4th. Um, we're right about neutral now. Then we're going to move into this positive phase. The mean average is the one I'm going to go with, the green line. And we stay in this positive phase all the way through the middle portion of the month, from positive to uh, neutral. So somewhere between zero and then one here on the scale, which is going to be slightly positive. Uh, so warmer air is really going to have an easier time developing during this time period. We kind of see that actually on the temperature pattern that we're going to be in. Uh, and then we really go through this cold phase for quite a while, all the way to the beginning of May. So from four, basically the whole second half of April here, according to the European Weeklies model, is going to have a negative AO, which again, allows that Arctic air to make its way into the United States. That doesn't mean everywhere is going to be cold, but there's going to be cold around for somebody. Um, and that makes the chances of it being colder where you're at higher because there will be cold air somewhere. Uh, and then it's really neutral here at the end. So, so for the first half of May, it's very, very neutral. That could just be the model really having low confidence in that time frame. It's hard to say for certain. Now, our next teleconnection is the NAO. And this one really just follows suit. I mean, really, it does about like this. It goes back neutral towards the end. Again, here's the neutral line. Um, and again, it's more like cold in the east with this one and then warm in the east here. So this is a much more east-based teleconnection. Uh, but warmth will be possible in the east uh, during that time frame here. I'll underline it. So from now till about... Uh, late week, and then we go back into this negative phase. That's kind of why I'm expecting colder than normal conditions this upcoming weekend. 
I, I think that's that's a strong indicator. Uh, this and then the AO are also in great agreement that that is going to be um, really just not a not a warm time period to say the least. Uh, and then our PNA. This one's an interesting one. Uh, let me draw the neutral line again. So this one, it doesn't tell you if there's going to be cold air or warm air in the United States. What it does tell you is, will the warm be in the west or be in the east? Okay, for instance, in the positive phase, the warmth will be over the west. In the negative phase, the warmth will be over the east, primarily. This, does not, this doesn't mean every time, but just primarily. So, we can see that um, for now, it looks like it's going to be in the east for a couple of days here. As you can see, it almost does a, like a W shape there. Um, but as we head towards the midweek to late week, this one lags behind a little bit as well, by the way. So you have to give it some time. But we grow, we pop very positive here for the weekend. Okay, so the results of that positive pop is going to last a couple of days after the positive pop. So it'll probably last all the way to here, to be honest. Um, and I think that's why the weekend is going to be very cold. And then we drop very negative here. Okay, so that does contradict what the AO and the NAO are saying, the two teleconnections we just took a look at a second ago. Which one of these will be the dominant feature, and that's really what we have to determine, is something that is hard to determine. Uh, I think this looks like a stronger indication than, honestly, what the AO and the NAO look like, just because of how negative this goes here. By the time we're reaching uh, after the weekend, so into next week, I think warmer conditions in the east could be a big possibility. Uh, after this weekend's cool down. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we could be looking at warmer conditions overall uh, in the eastern United States. And then we go towards neutral, and it stays neutral here all the way through the middle portion of May. It won't be that way most likely, but this model just gets averaged out because this is an ensemble model. So we're taking a look at 50 different opinions, and in the long range, they really average out because they start to show a lot of different stuff because confidence is lower. Um, so instead of all moving together like they do probably on this end of things, uh, they end up all just moving in separate directions, but equally in separate directions here, which brings it very close to the neutral line, if that makes sense. And that's overall what I'm thinking for the pattern. So we're a little bit warmer this week, midweek for the eastern United States. We pop positive here on the PNA. It's going to be a cool down this weekend for certain. Uh, but after that, I think that a warm-up is more likely, honestly, for quite a few days, possibly Monday through Thursday or something like that. And we could have another cool down the weekend after that, but that's a little bit longer range. Uh, but that's the short range pattern. Overall, in the long range, I think big cool downs in the east is something that we should be looking for, really. I mean, all the way through the beginning of May. It looks like that we're going to have a lot of Arctic blasts coming through still. Um, and that AO is going to be primarily negative for a majority of the time. I really think we're going to be taking a look at, you know, pretty frequent warm ups, but cool downs that come in uh, and really. Um, break things up as well. So it's going to be this back and forth pattern. Uh, and that doesn't happen every every spring. I get a lot of comments when I talk about a pattern like this where people will be like, oh, so just like every spring? Well, not exactly. Um, we're, we're taking a look at a, you, we can see per very persistent cold in the spring. You know, I could be on here if things look differently telling you, okay, now early April through mid-May, I think we're going to be in a very winter-like pattern. It's going to be very cold and there's not going to be a lot of warm-ups. Spring can go like that, or quite the opposite. You know what? We're going to enter into a summer-like pattern very early, and things look very warm from this point all the way through May with minimal amounts of cooldowns. I've seen both happen, but right now we're in a very back-and-forth pattern that I think it's going to be uh, fairly equal amounts of cooldowns and warm-ups. I do think there will be slightly more cooldowns than there will be warm-ups, though. So look for overall colder than normal conditions now through the middle portion of May, uh, so a majority here of the mid-spring. Anyway, for today's confidence tab, for obvious reasons, because we're taking a look at very, very long-range things, we we're at a 3 out of 6 today. So we've moved down a little bit from our typical videos just because this is a long-range outlook. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dovin Nagel, Little the Pan, Mandy Birchfield, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Donna Carnes as well. I would also like to thank our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Neil Harley, Michael Connolly, Alyssa Capite, Charles Stinnett, Bill Dallas, Garys, and John Cleese also. I would also like to thank our channel members, Capite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.